Hello everyone, my name is Kayla Arcia and my research assignment is over Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager and her implementation of habit training. So who is Eleanor Clark Slager? Well, Ms. Clark was a social welfare worker, an occupational therapy pioneer, and founder of the American Occupational Therapy Association, otherwise known as AOTA. She is known as the mother of occupational therapy and was bo born in Hobart, New York on October 13, 1871. In the year 1908, she began working with Ms. Jane Adams and Julia Lanthrop at Hull House, both known for their social work at this famous settlement house in Chicago. It was here where Ms. Clark studied invalid occupation or occupational therapy. In the year 1911, she attended a course sponsored by the Chicago School of Civics and Philanthropy and Hull House that taught occupations and amusements to staff working at state institutions. In the year 1912, she was asked by psychiatrist Adolf Mayer to direct a new occupational therapy department at the Henry Phipps Psychiatric Clinic of John Hopkins Hospital. It was at this time that Ms. Slager developed the area of work for which she is most noted, habit training, which we will look at in later slides. In the year 1915, she organized the first professional school for occupational therapy practitioners the Henry B. Faville School of Occupations. It was then in 1917 that she found the National Society for the Promotion of Occupational Therapy, later renamed AOTA. She held each office with, within the AOTA as secretary, president, vice president, and finally served as executive secretary for 14 years. She then retired in 1937. Ms. Clark unfortunately passed away on September 18, 1942 in Phillips Manor, New York, having suffered from arteriosclerosis for the last 10 years of her life. So what were some of Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager's beliefs? Well, Ms. Eleanor believed that people have the ability and capacity to change their habits and routines to better enable them to function and participate in community and social life. She believed that clients should have an evaluation and intervention program based on individual needs and goals, whether the program was done individually or in groups. She believed that intervention programs could be organized into levels to form a progression from those who had deteriorated in daily habits to those ready for discharge back to the community. She is well believed that education of the practitioners should vary from lectures for knowledge to training in occupations. Her beliefs continue to underpin the practice of occupational therapy today. Earlier, I went ahead and mentioned the Henry B. Faville School of Occupations. This school was a pioneer program in the history of occupational therapy. It was founded by Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager in 1915, and she served as director from 1915 to 1920. This school had two type of classes or programs. One was a curative workshop for disabled clients in need of occupational training, and the other was a teaching program designed to train people to work with clients. The curative workshop called the Occupational Center began in 1915 at the Illinois Society for Mental Hygiene. The teaching program began in 1917. Now, even though the program was highly regarded under Ms. Slager's leadership, it was not continued after her resignation and departure from Chicago in 1920. Now, even though the program was short-lived, it did help Ms. Slager introduce Habit training. Habit training is described as a re-education program designed to overcome disorganized habits, to modify other habits, and to construct new ones with the goal of restoring and maintaining health. So what exactly is habit training? Well, habit training is using 
occupational activities in the areas of work, rest, and play. In order for individuals to learn new skills, to be productive, and to gain therapeutic benefits of a balanced daily schedule. So habit training was the first occupational therapy treatment model and was introduced by Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager with input from renowned psychiatrist Adolf Mayer when both worked at John Hopkins in the early 1900s. So many sources helped Ms. Slager implement habit training, including the arts and crafts movement, moral treatment, and Mr. Adolf Mayer's ideas about holism, mental hygiene, and the use of time. These are some notes or observations done by Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager regarding habit training. So according to Ms. Slager, a large part of who we are is determined by our habits. The daily habits of a healthy individual are balanced between work, rest, and play. Additionally, Ms. Slager found that individuals needed a lot of attention in order to live a healthy lifestyle. So earlier we mentioned the Henry Phipps Psychiatric Clinic. This clinic was located in Baltimore, Maryland. The clinic was part of John Hopkins University and is still there today, opening on April 16, 1913. Ms. Slager was selected by Mr. Adolf Mayer to organize the occupational therapy program. Through this, Ms. Slager was able to see that those who are mentally ill have an imbalance in their habits. She was then able to bring more balance into their lives with different interventions. So what are some of these interventions? The occupational therapy program included activities like woodworking and pottery to engage patients. The main occupational forum that Ms. Slager described was a 24 hour per day schedule that provided a balance of self-care, physical exercises, work, and play. Eventually, instead of working with patients to complete a leisure activity, therapists started focusing on the activities that people needed to master to thrive in their day-to-day -day lives. So what was their impact today? First off, Ms. Slager is responsible for professionalizing occupational therapy. In 1917, she established the National Society for the Promotion of Occupational Therapy, now known as AOTA. The society established training standards and instituted the certification of occupational therapists. She is remembered not only as a great leader and administrator, but as, but as an exemplary practitioner. On the other hand, habit training set the groundwork for occupational therapy today, such as the OTPF. So what is the OTPF? The Occupational Therapy Practice Framework. It represents the latest in the profession's efforts to clearly articulate the occupational therapy domain and process. It builds on a set of values that the profession has held since its founding in 1917. The original vision had at its center a profound belief in the value of therapeutic occupations as a way to remediate illness and maintain health, as thought by Ms. Eleanor Clark Slager. Ultimately, the founders proposed a vision that was occupation-based, client-centered, contextual, and evidence-based. The vision articulated in the OTPF. And lastly, we have the Eleanor Clark Slager Lectureship Award. This award was established in 1954 as a memorial to Eleanor Clark Slager, one of the outstanding pioneers in the profession of occupational therapy. The purpose is to honor a member of AOTA who has contributed to the development of the profession's body of knowledge. Thank you all for listening.